Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I can't hear you. No. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're on your phone. Hang on, I'm going to take you off here. So I can't hear you. Ah, there you are. Okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. That's better. Is it better? I think this is actually going to be better. Yes. Hold on. Yes. Hold on, my setup. <laughs> we don't start recording. How's the back? Yeah. Is the background okay? Yeah, the background's great. But so what we'll do is just don't move forward because then you get the sunshine on your face. Okay. So that's perfect. Wait, I have the curtains. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> let's start again okay i have got to remember what i asked you but we'll just ring it that was great but we'll just ring it we get better every time we do it and that's perfect that's perfect you're on a perfect position now all right so i'm talking to donna Ma, donna brown right right and she has the missing piece puzzle company which is a personalized puzzle company that where you upload your picture and she makes a puzzle for you it is amazing Donna and I have known each other for a long time, since about 2011, when she started her business. So, Donna, why did you start the puzzle company? Well, my son is autistic, and he was having trouble with his tutor. And um, John came home, and he said, hey, I could send this picture away. We could have a puzzle made of Artie, and it'll go to China, come back in six weeks, and it costs like a billion dollars. And I said, well, I think we could do that better. So I opened up a puzzle company so that we could do it made in America um, with better materials and that the puzzle would come out better. Yeah, because the because quality, was, quality, yeah, the quality was bad, right? It was awful. And I just thought, you know, it gives people the wrong impression. And if we make it in America, we can make it right. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. So how did you start? I mean, you had to literally buy a printer, do, or did you, <laughs> how did you start? Uh, um, starting was an adventure. So I had this idea and I didn't know how to make puzzles. So I just researched and I started calling people and um, nobody helped me. Nobody would help me at all. So I, I just ordered a machine. I talked to photographers. I found out what the best printers were. I found out what type, it's a specialized paper that you have to buy, and it's specialized cardboard that you have to buy, I mean, and I found out that it's very expensive, but it was for my child. So I thought it would be a hobby at first, because I was a full-time teacher, and um, I failed to hire. Now I work seven days a week <laughs> making <laughs> puzzles. So great thing, exactly. love what yes. I do. Yes. So the exciting, I think one of the highlights that I've been, since I've known you, was that your puzzle went into space. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that adventure. I mean, that was amazing, right? I mean, you really got irritated with the guy because he was like emailing <laughs> you and contacting you and he was on and on and on, right? The man was asking me every question that, that I could ever answer. I, and I really thought he was, you know, trying to open his own puzzle company at one point because he was asking me how much does it weigh and how thick are the pieces and how, how big are they? Can you, you know, use a micrometer? And, you know, after about 40 or 50 emails, I'm like, hey, look, the puzzle costs $20. And you know what I mean? Like, this is all I could help you with. Well, it turns out that he was from Germany. He was an astronaut and he was to lead a space mission up at the International Space Station and wanted to make a round puzzle with his logo on it. So I don't think officially we were ever allowed to announce it, um, but it was the coolest thing because he was up in space for six months and he ended up leading this mission and it was really neat, really neat. Yeah. I know, right? I, mean, I thought that was absolutely, that was better than even being on TV. 
Okay, so um, everybody, you start a business and you get excited and you think, um, I want to be on TV, I want to explode, I want to, I want to have a thousand orders a day, it's no problem. Tell us about your experience with not being prepared. Well, we, we, we were on the Today Show. Uh, the first time we had a lot of orders and we had people working here, but the second time was recently. And it was after yes. the pandemic hit. And um, I had let my girl go because New Jersey was one of the first states that was really hit with this pandemic. And we were supposed to close for two weeks. So I let her go because her husband was working in a high risk um, you know, prison. Her daughter was still in school. And you know, I said to her, well, I'll come back in two weeks. Within that time, Yahoo had contacted the Today Show, and the Today Show said, you know, we want to do a puzzle company, so they found me. Um, I was not prepared, and this could have really ruined my business. Um, I didn't have helpers here. I didn't have a backup plan. I think that's really, really important, you know, for any business to have. You know, you hear that you need one, but you really don't understand. If I had had a backup plan, I wouldn't have had to refund a lot of money. And I, you know, my business looked bad when I had to refund money. I was apologizing to customers because I couldn't get the product to them in time. It was bad. It was a bad, bad business decision. Um, it was a pandemic. None of us knew. But if I had thought about like a catastrophic plan, I could have avoided it, which I have one now. I have a plan. If we ever go back and shut down or if ever there's a hurricane or whatever, I know what to do. But I didn't know then, and it yeah. could really your brand or our brand, excuse me. <laughs> so what what is your what is your backup plan? Well, I've trained a bunch of people. Some people come from afar, and some are very close to the company. They all have a different code to get into the building. So we change the lock system. Um, they can come in whenever they want. So they could come in at twelve o'clock at night. They could come at two in the morning. It's all logged. We have a camera system here. I can work from my living room from home because I changed all of my programs so that I could work remotely. So now I don't physically need to be here. I need someone here physically, but it doesn't necessarily have to be me. Um, yes. You know, if the roads are closed or, or whatever, I'm, I'm a half an hour away. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. So we won't so, go into shutdown. Yes, exactly. But you are, you are really doing well now and Christmas is coming up. Um, normally you, I mean, the pandemic, I think, has changed so many businesses because normally you're doing really well with, with weddings. Oh, yes. And so you got an idea, and everybody's on the same idea now, but you got this idea to use your, your, your bits and pieces that you don't use for puzzles as wedding puzzle guest books. So what happens is um, most people who are getting married, they take all these beautiful, you know, engagement photos and they have professionally made and then they like sit in a closet. Do you know what I mean? So their guest book sits in a closet. So we, what we do is we print their engagement photos and we make them into puzzles. So people can sign the back of them and then or the front of them if they want yeah. in sharp paper and they can actually hang this puzzle up as a picture because they're 20 by 30 and you know it's a guest book that you use forever but yes. we we used to have a lot of um white paper left so the white paper that we printed on the printer paper it would be left over and it was wasted like there were about 10 feet of the roll that are wasted and the rolls are extremely expensive so we started making white puzzles just out of a whim and um, sold them as guest books, and now that 10 foot could work. So yes. you have to find a way to use every bit of your material or to find some other company that, you know, instead of putting your waste out there, you know, maybe it will fit them. I mean, we work with a lot of different companies now, and uh, we give away our boxes that, you know, they, they need to pack their stuff for eBay sales or whatever that we source to other yes. people, so we, it doesn't cost. Okay, fabulous. So what would you, this is the big question, what would you do, and you've frozen a little bit, give it a go. So what would you do, <laughs> what would you do if you ever had to start again? What would you do differently? 
Well, I'd listen to you a little more, Veronica, because in the very beginning of time, when I first met you, I had this, you know, I'm going to be on the internet, I'm going to make a million sales. And I didn't know anything about marketing. I didn't know about SEO, and I surely didn't know about the social sites. So yes. early on, you told me that I should get into blogging, and I should get into Pinterest, and I should get into Facebook, and I just kind of rolled my eyes. And I did it. But I didn't do as much as I should have. So yes. fortunately, I have a foothold in Pinterest because early on, we were at the very beginning of Pinterest. I yes. did, what you, but I wish if I could do it all again, I would have really done more um, marketing than I did now. Because I think, you know, even though we crawled our way to the top of the heap, yes. we had a lot of competition. Um, yes. And I think that we wouldn't have as much competition because, you know, we would have been more of an authority, easier. Yeah, yeah. I think, but you know, so we have, you have to keep an eye on all these, all new trends coming out and maybe taking advantage of them. But you can't always do everything because, you know, our customers aren't everywhere. So you need to also know exactly where your customers are. But, Talking about Pinterest, I mean, I remember you did a competition on Pinterest when it started out, which was great, but and then you stopped doing Pinterest. But you are still getting some orders from Pinterest. That's absolutely amazing, right? Yes, it's amazing. I, I get a lot of people who view my website because of, early on when we did all of our stuff on Pinterest, those pins are still there. They're there forever. So if if I could just make a suggestion to everyone, don't put your price on your picture because I have pictures out there where the price was less than half of what we charge now. And you know what I mean? So if you're going to put something out on the internet, it's there forever. So yes. don't, don't push yourself into a corner because prices change. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So don't, yeah, don't date your, your photos. Don't brand, um, yourself with just a, you know, this costs twenty dollars or this costs twenty five dollars. When you'll never mm -hmm. get great prices, so you know, remember and everything so, is forever. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Every picture out there is forever. So, yeah. and then also when we would we were looking at your pricing, and I mean, you have a band of where you can sell your products, and you can't really price yourself out of the out of the market. So, and that's probably with every product out there. So what we did extra, we actually have a rush order that you charge for on your website that we just put it on and you said, well, let's see if it works. And people are actually um, buying, what's the five or $10 for the extra rush, rush order, right? It's $5. So what it'll do is it'll take the order from the back of the queue and it'll move it up to the front of my queue and they'll get it faster, you know, especially with the pandemic. It's really important to do something like that because you're going to get a lot of orders. This is the time for online sales. People yes. are not going out and people are learning and it's very comfortable. Even when they return to work, people are going to do a lot more online yeah. shopping. They are going to be yeah. in store. Yeah. Yeah. So do it now. Don't wait. Don't think that it's not happening. It's happening every day. If you look yeah. at the TV stations, Walmart's taking a run for Amazon now. You know, yeah. they're commercials. So get on every single um, sales yeah. channel. That you can. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, this is, I think, I mean, we saw a surge in e commerce when, when you started. That surge was there. And I think we're on another surge. I mean, e commerce has grown so much in the last six months compared to the last 10 years. Um, and this is the time to get your stuff online and to get selling something. Um, even if you don't have something to sell, just make a decision, get online and start practicing because you can only learn as you as you are selling. Um, anyway, thank you so much for popping in. I am so happy that you agreed to be with us because you have got so much experience. And I hope uh, if uh, anybody has a question, Put it in the comments below and we will answer. And I will have Donna, all Donna's information in, I'll pop them in the, in the comments as well. But we also have it on the website, on the Virtual Summit uh, page, and it will stay there and it will be also be in the group. 
Thank you, thank you, Donna, for popping in with me. I really appreciate you you helping us out and being here. Always great to talk with you, Veronica. You <laughs> you are the reason that my business was found online, and I, I am thankful to you forever. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye.